you have been sticking to your diet, maintaining a calorie deficit and resisting every temptation. Then it's time for your cheat meal. You are free to eat. You let loose and indulge in all the foods you've been craving. But then a nagging thought creeps in. Could this cheat meal actually sabotage all your hard-earned weight loss progress? How could they do that? Hello, my dears, and welcome. I'm Marina, a registered dietitian with a passion for guiding others on their weight loss journey. Having lost 80 pounds myself, I understand the confusion surrounding cheat meals. Do they serve a purpose or do they pose a risk to your weight loss journey? In this video, we'll explore potential benefits and drawbacks of incorporating cheat meal into your weight loss journey and decide if cheat meals actually sabotage weight loss efforts. They lured us down here so they could sabotage our mission! Plus, we'll share some practical tips on how to enjoy them without derailing your diet. Stick around until the end. I make learning fun, incredibly fun. One of the toughest parts of weight loss journey is finding ways to stick to healthier eating habits and maintaining a calorie deficit while still enjoying the foods you love. Of course, it's only natural that we enjoy some foods more than others and usually those we enjoy the most are not so weight loss friendly. So-called hyperpalatable foods people tend to love are high in calories, fat, sugars and sodium. When trying to lose weight, we often restrict these foods most of the time. But life isn't much fun without the occasional piece of cake and that's where the cheat meals come to play. Cheat meals originated in fitness culture where bodybuilders and fitness enthusiasts incorporated higher calorie meals after following very strict diets. This strategy supposedly gave them metabolic boost and psychological break from dieting. Hungry and angry, you hangry, Claire. Over time, this practice spread to mainstream diet culture, mainly popularized by social media. In 2022, a brief investigation of the hashtag cheat meal on Instagram yielded over 4.2 million images and videos. So what constitutes a cheat meal? Simply put, a cheat meal is a higher calorie meal that typically isn't included in your daily weight loss diet and breaks the rules of that diet. So cheat that. When we think of cheat meals, salads aren't usually what comes to mind. Instead, we envision foods like burgers and fries, cookies, cakes and other indulgences. The foods chosen for a cheat meal vary from person to person based on individual tastes, but they are typically energy dense and high in fats. From my experience working with clients, women tend to choose sweeter foods like ice cream or cakes, while men often go for salty, meaty foods like burgers. Personally, I enjoyed both. What about you guys? Are you in the sweet or salty camp? Tell me your secret dream, child. No matter your food preference, having a cheat meal means giving yourself permission to temporarily deviate from your diet and enjoy some of the fun foods you've been craving. The theory is that by allowing yourself brief periods of indulgence, you'll be more likely to stick to your prescribed diet the majority of the time. To clarify, having a cheat meal is not the same as taking a diet break or having refeeds, which typically last three to four days and are more controlled in terms of nutrient intake. We will look at the possible benefits of a cheat meal, but before that, let's talk about the biggest problem with cheat meals. Dan, can we have a problem? The biggest problem with a cheat meal isn't about the foods you choose or how often you have them. It's the vocabulary. Words hurt, you know. The word cheat is problematic in itself as it carries a negative connotation that makes us feel guilty even though we did nothing wrong other than eating a higher calorie meal. I cheat on my diet, but nobody knows. Cheating on what? Who? Are you going to jail for eating that burger? 
He's in jail? The fact is that in modern society, food and eating are associated with ambivalent feelings such as pleasure and enjoyment, but also worry and concern which can be unproductive in terms of health and weight control. That guilt after a cheat meal can further black and white thinking about food, known as the hotimus thinking, where we view certain foods as bad foods, eaten only as a cheat meal, and others good foods we eat every day. For some people, the guilt after eating a cheat meal or cheat food, such as chocolate, is so overwhelming that they either restrict their diets more than necessary, making it unsustainable long term, or go completely off track because they feel they've broken the diet and can't stop eating all the bad foods they've been avoiding. This black and white thinking is so ingrained for some people that when they are on the diet, they can't deviate even slightly. When they eventually have a cheat meal, it turns into epic cheat days, potentially leading to a strict binge cycle with an on and off switch for the diet. This type of thinking about foods adds a moral burden to every decision you make about eating and is not helpful. Black and white thinking can be a predictor of weight regain in some dieters. In others, there is a link between weight regain and restraint eating, which involves completely avoiding so-called bad foods for a period of time and then giving up on a diet due to too much restraint. Nevertheless, such simplified and dysfunctional thinking styles about food should be avoided because words matter. Stop being dramatic. The word cheat implies that we need to cheat on our unenjoyable and horrible diet to survive the weight loss journey, which should not be the case. Instead, we could reframe these terms and say that we occasionally eat those foods for pleasure and fun. Isn't that a better choice? It's a choice. Everything's a choice. Now for the potential benefits. The idea that cheat meals will improve weight loss progress is based on a couple of things. Boosting metabolism, providing psychological break from dieting, and improving functions of some hormones that regulate appetite. Let's look at the metabolism first. When we lose some amount of weight, our resting metabolic rate drops due to the lost mass and other compensatory mechanisms, so naturally we'll need less energy to sustain calorie deficit and weight loss. Can a cheat meal then help in terms of boosting that resting rate? Yeah, but not really. Research suggests that there could be a minor increase in energy expenditure, but usually less than 100 calories, which is so insignificant in a grand scheme of weight loss that it's not worth mentioning. All right then, relax. This increase isn't the reason to enjoy cheat meal thinking you will hack your metabolism with your cheeseburger. What about hormones? One of the main characters in the weight loss story is hormone leptin responsible for suppressing signals of hunger. Leptin circulates in blood and acts on the brain to regulate food intake and energy expenditure. When fat mass falls, plasma leptin levels fall, stimulating appetite and suppressing energy expenditure until fat mass is restored. In other words, when we lose weight, leptin wants to make us fat again. Fat bitch! Some suggest that eating high-calorie foods can help raise this hormone back and prevent increased appetite. But the truth is, although circulating leptin levels will rise after having a cheat meal and eating more calories, this happiness is short-lived as leptin levels will return to the baseline in a day or less. So, in terms of hormones, no actual weight loss benefits of a cheat meal. No! Lastly, let's discuss the psychological aspect, which is often the most significant part of the weight loss journey. It's all in your mind. A cheat meal can provide a mental break and psychological relief from the strict dietary and caloric restrictions of a weight loss diet. 
When you are in a caloric deficit for an extended period, your appetite-regulating hormones can increase and cravings can become intense. I am so hungry I could eat a skunk's bottom. In such cases, a cheat meal can offer a breather. The idea is that by being flexible and occasionally allowing yourself to sometimes indulge in foods not regularly eaten on your diet, you'll then have the motivation to stick to your planned diet most of the time. Some studies do suggest that encouraging a flexible approach to eating behavior and discouraging rigid adherence to a diet may lead to better intentional weight loss. While this can work for some, not everyone can regulate their eating behaviors in the same way. If a person tends to be less adherent to their overall weight loss diet after a cheat meal or there is too many of them and they offset caloric deficit, then a cheat meal may be inappropriate for that particular person in terms of their weight loss goals. What about you guys? Can you go back on that horse after a cheat meal or does it open the gates to junk food hell? Why don't you go to Hawaii, not hell? <laughs> for some people, cheat meals can also act as rewards for adhering to strict diets. However, viewing food as a reward can negatively impact our relationship with food by reinforcing that black and white mindset. It implies that you can have certain foods if you've been good on your diet, and if not, you can't have them. Homie, have you been cheating on your diet? Nevertheless, food as a reward can be tricky. After all, you know who else is rewarded with food, right? Kiki, Luby. Now for the negative aspects of a cheat meal. We've already covered the part about black and white mentality towards food, which can challenge our healthy relationship with food. But the main challenge with cheat meal is overeating and its potential to encourage binge-style eating behavior. In that terms, it is necessary to recognize that a cheat meal for a 150 kg muscular guy with vastly higher caloric needs probably can be compared to your own needs without risking your weight loss progress. Social media has perpetuated this idea of epic cheat meals where people consume thousands of calories, even turning it into a challenge. In my opinion, that isn't just a harmless treat or a fun way to enjoy food, but plain overeating and sometimes binge eating, which can lead to a distorted eating behavior not uncommon in the fitness world. There! I said it! A study published in the Journal of ED found that engaging in cheat meal phenomena was linked to ED behaviors and psychopathology among some young adults. Cheat meals that exceed half or even more than half of your total daily energy needs can hinder progress toward weight loss goals and might lead to feelings of guilt and shame. Incorporating some portion control and moderate calorie restriction when having a cheat meal can be beneficial in preventing overeating. But if your regular weight loss diet is overly restrictive and your calorie deficit too severe, there is a big possibility of overeating when confronted with a cheat meal. In that case, it might be wise to reassess and consider adding small amounts of fun foods to practice portion control. Overeating during cheat meals can actually ruin your weight loss progress. My diet is ruined! Consider this scenario. You follow a daily diet plan with caloric intake of 1,800 calories, maintaining a consistent 500 calories deficit each day to achieve weight loss. However, during a cheat meal, you indulge in high calorie foods exceeding your daily energy needs by a substantial margin. This sudden influx of calories disrupts your calorie deficit and can undermine the progress you've made toward your weight loss goals. In essence, if you overdo a cheat meal, the surplus of calories can negate the calorie deficit you've maintained on other days, leading to an energy balance by the end of the week and stalling your weight loss progress. 
Alternatively, if you are budgeting your daily calorie intake lower to leave some room for a bigger cheat meal, you could still achieve calorie deficit in the end of the week, but there is a chance you'll be suffering during higher deficit days and overeat on a cheat meal day, possibly even exceeding that budget and again stalling your weight loss. So I guess we've answered the question of the video. But is there a way to enjoy our cheat meal and not ruin our weight loss progress? I'd say she found a way out, wouldn't you? To enjoy a cheat meal without ruining your weight loss progress, it's important to approach it with balance and mindfulness. First, limit cheat meals to one to two times a week to ensure they don't significantly impact your overall calorie deficit. I don't advise for enormous caloric cheat meals, it's still best to keep things moderate during your weight loss diet. But if it happens once in a full moon, let it be. I said you are free to eat. Have a dumpling. Moving on, incorporating some protein into your cheat meal, it's also helpful because protein keeps you full and satisfied, reducing the likelihood of overeating, and it's also a good idea to be mindful of your fat intake during the rest of a day when you plan to have a cheat meal, balancing it out by eating a bit lighter meal earlier. Planning smaller indulgences or controlling portion size can also help. For instance, instead of a whole pizza, have a couple of slices with a side salad or an ice cream bar after a meal. This way, you practice moderation consistently. Moderation, Lois. And side note, don't use cheat meals as an excuse to overeat until you feel sick. I guess I could do without eating so much junk. You could also schedule your cheat meal on a more active days, which can help offset the extra calories and fuel extra activity. Or you can reserve your cheat meal for social gatherings and enjoy fun foods with your family and friends, which additionally helps you avoid being a bitter party pooper. I am fun! I am fun, damn it! Additionally, try to incorporate a cheat meal on a random weekday instead of just on weekend. Usually, people tend to suffer and over-restrict diets during the week only to indulge excessively on the weekend. Research suggests that there is a correlation between long-lasted weekend lifestyle patterns and its potential to promote the development of obesity. It is also a good idea that you don't do cheat meals two days in a row. Get back on that horse right after because it gets harder the longer you wait because now you have the taste for the good things. Calories, 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 calories. Adopting the 80-20 approach, where 80% of your diet consists of whole, nutrient-dense foods and 20% is reserved for indulgences, can also be helpful. This means you can enjoy a couple of small indulgences throughout the week or one larger one, as long as it fits into your caloric budget and lifestyle. Ultimately, no foods need to be off-limits all the time, as all foods can fit into your diet even on a weight loss plan. Fun, high-calorie foods less often and in smaller quantities, while nutrient-dense whole foods more frequently. And lastly, consider experimenting with adjustments to your weight loss diet to mimic your favorite high-calorie fun foods with lower-calorie swaps. For instance, you could enjoy a turkey burger topped with low-fat cheese and a side salad with a low-calorie dressing instead of traditional beef burger with full-fat cheese and fries. While this kind of swaps can provide a similar taste experience, it is not intended to replace the real thing. Well, obviously. However, incorporating more of these type of meals into your weight loss journey can also help you indulge your cravings in a healthier way, reserving the real thing for occasional treats. To conclude our thoughts, to lose weight, you will need to practice some form of dietary and calorie restrictions, but pick one you can sustain without immense suffering and do long term. 
Cheat meal can be a part of that strategy, providing psychological relief and helping you stick to your diet, but they will look different for different people. Thank you for watching, my dear, and if you found these tips helpful, your like, comment, and subscription will be greatly appreciated. Fingers crossed for your weight loss journey, and see you in the next one. Bye!